चलो चलो हेलो यस दिस इज लिटरेचर इन इंग्लिश हेलो एवरी वन How many people do we have here? Good afternoon. Yeah, hello. Hello. All right, good afternoon everyone. I hope all of the literature students for SS2 are in here. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, Rahima, how are you? I can see Rokil, Fatima. Now, please, um, those of you with initials or some weird symbols as your username, I please like you to change them. Who is S? For instance, just type your name. For instance, who is S? All right, okay, yeah, please. Um, Miriam, all right, okay. So we're gonna get started right now. Those um, other students will join us as we progress. Are we good? And now please, I'd like to ask now, how many of you have done the assignments that were given before we went on the break? The one on the poem, the leader and the leg. Yes, anyone? Miriam, did you do the assignment? Okay, Fatima. Okay, Fatima has read the poem. That's good. Yes, who else? Even if you've read the poem, I'd like to know. Simi, how about you? Oh, we didn't get the assignment. Okay. Rakib. Now, what class is Simi in? Okay. Hold on one minute. All right, okay. So we have um, Simi, Miriam. Rocky, Rahima, Rahima, did you do the assignment? Or have you read the poem? Fatima and Simi, it seems you are the only ones responding right now. So, but we're going to proceed. We would um, deal with the assignment later on. The most important aspect is reading the poem because without having read the poem, it would be a bit difficult for us to progress. Now, the poem, as those of you, yes, yes, it's the one about the leader. Yeah, uh, very good. Aha. Good. So now, the poem is the leader and the lead. 
written by Neo Shindari. I'll ask a few questions and then Okay, Rahima wasn't given a question. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, asking about the NMC, Miriam, please, Miriam and every other person, let's restrict our discussion on the chat to what we're doing on this lesson. So NMC and other information will be gotten later. Hope you're good. All right. I hope you can all see this slide. Very good. We're going to deal with these few questions before we proceed. The title of the poem is The Leader and the Lead, and it's obvious to some extent what the poem is about. So it raises some questions. The first one we want to consider is who is a leader? Yes, Rahima, what's your understanding of who a leader is? Rahima, Abdul, Fatima. Mm, thank you, Fatima. A person who leads these people for good benefits. Okay. Um, okay. Let's have a definition without using the word lead. Okay, good. See me? Very good. A leader is someone who leads examples for people to follow. Bravo. Uh -huh, I like that. Do you have any other answers before we proceed? I like that definition. A leader is someone who leads examples of people to follow. Good. You're leading us to another aspect of, or the other aspect of that question, which I didn't put, which is who is a follower? Now, the second question, Kirahima, hmm. a leader is a person who rules with structural examples. We are pressed for time, you know, that I would have asked you to give examples of your structural examples. But the key word there is rules. I think that's what you want to focus on, rules. Good. So a leader is someone who rules. A leader is someone who lays examples. A leader is someone that people follow. Very good, well done. Second question, mention some characteristics of a leader. Not a question, but mention some characteristics of a leader. What are those qualities that help you identify a leader? Bravery, good, Fatima. So someone who exhibits bravery is more likely to be considered a leader. Okay, honesty, good leadership. Mm. Good leadership is broad. Eh? Good bravery, honesty. All right, see me is adding humility, confidence, good. corruption free. Okay, is there another way? to express that answer, Rahima. What do you call someone who is free from corruption or who isn't corrupt? Good have honest, yes. Someone who is free from corruption is someone who has integrity. Okay, there are more answers. Commitment, thank you, Simi. Fatima, inspiration, positive attitude, good. A leader is someone who inspires. It's important that you understand that irrespective of whatever qualities that the leader may have, the individual may have, if that person doesn't command your respect or inspiration, well, you wouldn't really want to follow such an individual. Any other qualities, there are quite a number of them. You may have had to study them under subject, topics and subjects such as civic, education, social studies, and so on. Now, from all of the characteristics that you mentioned and ones that you even have, uh, even to, um, that you haven't even mentioned yet, which do you think is the most important? We have honesty, we have bravery. Integrity good, religious mind, responsibility. Now, okay, please, which question are you answering now, Simin? Is responsibility your answer to the third 
question. Okay, very good. So Simi thinks that the most important characteristic of a leader is responsibility. Okay, Fatima says it's bravery. Okay, good. A positive attitude. Okay, for Fatima, good. Bravery, positive attitude. Okay. I think you all have very good answers. Honesty, integrity, good. Now you see, all of your answers are quite correct because there really isn't one characteristic or quality or trait that is considered the greatest. You may feel, for instance, Raima feels honesty is most important, but Fatima is bravery. Um, I agree with both of you. I think integrity is the most important trait that a leader should possess. And if you really consider all of these attributes, you find out that one way or the other, they're interrelated. Someone who is honest is more likely to show a positive attitude and such an individual would more likely show bravery in the face of danger. All right, well done, good. Now, right here, I have a quote by Aristotle. It says, he who cannot be a good follower cannot be a good leader. Now, for Aristotle, the most important quality of a leader is the ability to follow. So, in your definitions, yes. Welcome, Yeshirat. You can scroll up to have a look at the questions and the chats. Now, for Aristotle, being able to follow is the most significant trait or characteristic that a leader may possess. Yes, good, Fatima, good followership. And really, Aristotle has a very strong point because when you consider all of the other qualities we mentioned and you look at being a good follower, we find that when a leader is able to show that he helps him relate with his followers and the followers are able to give him that respect, that trust, and do a lot of um, several other things fall into place. Now, it's important that we understand what it is to be a leader and what it is to be a follower. Let's go back to the title of the poem, The Leader and the Leg. It's Clear, I believe to everyone that the lead in the title is referring to the followers, right? Are we all clear on that? Good. Thank you, Rahima. So for Rahima, Fatima, and others who have read the poem, let's do something very quickly. In a few sentences, one, two, three sentences, I wanted to share with the class what you understand from the poem. What do you think the poem, The Leader and the Lead, is all about? Please, as you join in, introduce yourself, especially those with um, some nicknames, Billion Dollar Baby. I don't think that's a registered student of NTIC. What's your name? Okay, Fatima, yes. The poem is about different qualities of animals, okay. You have more to share with us. What, ab what about the different qualities of animals does the poem talk about? Good. And how they are led by the people, how they lead the people. Please be clearer. All right, yes, you wrote, if you've read the poem, what do you think it's about? Rahima, yes, you wrote. 
and if I, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. What's the poem about? By the way, do you still have your copies of the poem? Those of you who got them before leaving school. Okay, Simi, thank you very much. Simi says the poet uses animals to explain the concept or struggle of leadership. Okay, good. And I think we can tie that with Fatima's response. So the struggle comes from the different qualities of the animals and how they want to rule or lead. Okay, good. The animal rulings. Thank you, Rahima. I think we get the gist of the poem. There are some of you who may have um, read some stories about some animals while growing up. Probably you've been told some stories about how some animals in the animal kingdom or in the jungle came together to elect or to choose a leader. Now, this poem talks about something similar. There are several stories such as that. You have, um, there's one I remember about the, how the monkey was chosen to become um, the king. There was an election and, well, let's call it an election because the animals just chose the monkey as their king simply because he could dance. So for them, the most important quality of, the leader, of a leader was the ability to dance. And he danced so well that they were entertained and they crowned him the king. But the fox was very displeased with that. And he laid a trap to set the monkey. What he did was to call the monkey's attention to a piece of meat that some hunters had placed in the trap. And as soon as the monkey saw it, he picked it up and ate it. And he called all of the animals, come around and say, hey, see, look at the king that you guys just chose. It's someone that doesn't even have um, discipline. He's not disciplined. How would you want an indisciplined fellow to be king over you? And the animals didn't think twice um, about letting go of the monkey as their king. Thank you, Rahima. Yes, the poem contrasts animal life with that of humans. Now, please, everyone, let's note that this is a very important point. We're going to come to it much later. Now, let's have a look at the poem. If you have the slip that was given to you at school, you can refer to it. Other than that, just look through as I read. The leader and the lead. The lion takes his claim to the leadership of the pack. But the antelopes remember the ferocious pounds of his paws. The hyena says the crown is made for him, but the impalas shudder at his lethal appetite. The giraffe craves a place in the front, but his eyes are too far from the ground. When the zebra says it is right to lead, the park points to the duplicity of his stripes. The elephant trudges into the park tussle, but its colleagues dread his trampling feet. The war hog is too ugly, the rhino too riotous, and the park thrashes around like a snake without a head. Our need calls for a hybrid of habits, proclaims the forest sage. A little bit of a lion, a little bit of a lamb. Tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe. Transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. A leader who knows how to follow, followers mindful of their right to lead. Now we can take a moment to look at the poem and I would want you to once again share what you understand by some lines. Now you notice that the poem is arranged in 12 stanzas in the form of couplet. So you actually have five stanzas, but each stanza is actually a couplet. I hope you all understand what a couplet is. Basically just two lines together that form a stanza. So yeah, the, um, Fatima wants to read it. People need a hybrid of habits. Okay, good. And what is meant by the word hybrid? Fatima, okay, I'm going to unmute you now. 
So Fatima, you can speak. Please explain to us what is meant by having a hybrid of habits, it's different characters. How? Hello? Yes, Fatima. All right, can you? I'm going to do this, let's, let's stick to the chat. So, um, Fatima has said that um, the people need a hybrid of habits, and that means that different characters are required. Very good. Okay, thank you. A combination of both the ability to lead and follow. Okay, good. That's an example of a hybrid of characters. Now, looking through the poem, we'll find several traits or characters that are represented by certain animals. Let me say that. Now, for those of you who had the questions for the assignment, one of the questions was that you should mention the animals in the poem. Now, let's see how many animals do we have mentioned in the poem. We can do a quick check. Okay, 13. Okay, that's a very good attempt, Fatima. Okay, okay so go 13 animal. Okay. Rahima says 10. Okay, good. Right. Now, take note some animals may be mentioned more than once. Okay, Fatima says 13 or 14. Fatima, could you share with us the extra one? Which did you just find that makes it 14? Do okay. And what they do? Okay, very the forest age. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, like a good. Bravo. Now everyone, thanks for telling us. Now a do is actually a female deer or female antelope. So the female antelope or the female deer is called a do. Right, well done everyone. So we have the lion, we have antelopes, the hyena, impala, giraffe. Zebra, elephant, the warthog, rhino, snake. Okay, the forest said, okay, let's leave the forest said. Be it's good if we assume that um, the forest said is the title of an animal. We're going to deliberately leave him or her out of the list of animals. So we'll move on. We have a lamb here, tiger, you do, which is the female of a um of a deer or an antelope. Then okay, that's all. So now before we move on, what or who is a sage? Yes. Okay, see me, okay, see me, says to have, okay. Someone who has attained wisdom, okay. Okay, thank you, see me, that's Fatima, Fatima says, um, a sage is someone who has attained wisdom. Simi says a sage is a philosopher or a preacher. Well done. Yes, yes, Sirat. Who is a sage?
Okay. In reference to the poem, that's according to Fatima, it said is the animal which offers the same wisdom, the wisest animal. Wow, that's an interesting angle, the wisest animal. That can lead us into a discussion of which animal is the wisest. Okay, let's, let's see. Which, guys, which animal do you consider to be the wisest? Let's digress a bit. Mm, okay, maybe the turtle is the owl. Okay. From all of our fables while growing up, yes. Mm, the owl. Do you agree with Fatima that the turtle is the, the wisest? <laughs> the baboon according to Lion King. Very interesting. <laughs> okay, monkey. Okay. Um, you all have very good answers, but I won't agree with the turtle. The turtle is more of a corny, a crafty fellow. Okay, Mufasa. You've all seen the Lion King, eh? Okay, well done. Now, because we're making a lot of reference to fables, I hope you know that this poem can also be classified as a fable. Remember that a fable, yeah, good, is any literary work that makes use of animals as its character, or as the character in it. So if you have a story, a play, or a poem that has animals as its characters, and their utterances and their actions are to help teach a lesson, what you have is a fable. Okay, good, let's proceed. Okay. I have a couple of animals that we're going to run through. Let's see how many of them we can identify. Now, animal A, everyone, let's see. Okay, very good, lion. Okay, that's clear enough. Okay, Sammy, so please, what do you want me to repeat? Okay, very good. What about B? Animal B. Can you figure out what animal that is? All right, okay, see me, I get you. Now, a fable is any literary work that has characters that are animals and that is intended to teach a moral lesson. All of those animal stories that you listen to or you read about growing up are fables. The Lion King is a classic fable. This poem is also a fable. The Leader and the Lead is a fable because also the poem, we have several animals being mentioned, speaking, carrying out actions. And the entire poem is designed to teach us a particular lesson. Okay, good. You're all saying that B is an answer, all right? What about C? Rema says Giselle, okay, do or dare. Okay, dare, yeah. all right. Okay, a minute, please, okay. Yeah, all right, okay, very good responses. Now, I need to clear up something. You are all right. Of B and C, but at the same time, you need to make a distinction. Now, um, many biologists say that what well, the animals you have in B and C are kinds of deer. They belong to the do do the deer animal, um, deer family, yeah, deer family, family. So B is actually an impala. Well, um, no, sorry, B is the, an antelope. C is actually an impala. They look quite alike. Uh, even the gazelle looks as much as um, they do, but they have very slight characteristics or differences in behavior. Now, what animal do you have in B? Oh, somebody is mentioning Bambi. Uh, okay, D, very good. Hyena, you're all correct. So, almost all of these animals are present in the Lion King. Now, before we move on to another set of animals, let's say something briefly about these four. One characteristic of each. So let me know which animal you're referring to. The lion, hyena, um, gazelle, or deer, and so on. Which one possesses bravery, Fatima? 
Lion, okay, good. Mm, Fatima, which one possesses compassion? Please mention the name of the animal before you say its quality. Okay, that one is known for his bravery and good leadership. Okay. Okay, Fatima the Impala possesses compassion. Okay. That's it, right. Those animals, um, the deer, the Impala, the um, antelope, because of how graceful and gentle they look, a lot of people associate gentleness, kindness, and compassion with them. Good. Hyena for his aggression, okay. Looking at the poem, you would even get some clues as to some of the characteristics of these animals. Well done, everyone. Let's move on. Ah, Simi said hyenas are famous scavengers. Very correct. Now, which animals do we have in pictures E and F? Well done, Fatima. Warthog and Rhino are in pictures E and F. Okay, good. Warthog's me. Right now, what qualities do E and F possess? The Warthog and the Rhino? Just one. What is the Warthog known for? <laughs> okay, good. Ugliness. Yeah, it's mentioned in the poem also. Good. Mm -hmm. Warthog, okay. Fatima, which animal are you referring to? Okay, both, wait, okay, wait. But one is significantly more heavier than the other. Yeah. So yeah, the one of these heavy at least for its size, but the rhino is regarded as being much heavier, the ugliness of right. So there are several other animals mentioned in the passage, in the poem rather. Rhinos are cute, okay, yes. Especially the gray or the white one. The one in the picture is a white rhino. All right, good. Now we have a fair understanding of the poem and we want to move on to the poet. This is an introductory class and the idea is to get an overview of what the poem is about, understand where the poet is coming from and try to see how all of those will help us better appreciate the poem. Okay, Fatima, that will not be allowed here. We do not, this is a literature class. Um, I know you cannot use Detroit devices wrongly. You are abusing Detroit devices. I don't want such comments from you or anyone. Okay, yes. Rhinos are big and they stay in the water. Okay, good. They are, um, yeah, they spend a lot of time both on water and land. All right. Now, do anyone remember who the poet is? Poets whose work we're considering. Who wrote The Leader and the Leg? Okay, thanks, Fatima. Yes, the rhino is writers. We will pay more attention to the animals and their qualities later on because we're still going to go through each line of the poem. Okay, it says, she says, Nina Oshundari. Okay, that's Nigi Oshundari. Nice try. Okay, okay, well done, everyone. So here we have a short bio of the poet. I hope you can all see what's on the screen. That's Nigi Oshundari. was born on the 12th of March, 1947 in Ikere Ikiti, Ikiti State, Nigeria. For his university education, he went to UI, University of Ibadan, Leeds, and on to York University in Canada for his PhD. So he's a world-renowned poet, lecturer, and essayist. An essayist is someone who writes essays. So um, he's also famous as a writer of essays, essays on various topics. Now, but in addition to all of that, as you can see on this slide, he's also famous as an activist and a government critic. Is one of those poets that like to talk about nature in his work. So in a lot of his poems, you find animals being mentioned, plants, um, love and respect for the earth. He believes that we shouldn't um, abuse nature. We should deal with plants and animals in a respectful way because we derive a whole lot of benefits from them and the earth in general. And if we mistreat or abuse the earth, 
we will be the ones actually on the losing side. So as a poet and as an academic, he has gotten several awards, some of which are the Commonwealth Poetry Prize and the ANA Prize. He got those two in 1986, the Normal Award in 1990, and the Nigerian National Order of Merit Award. So he got that in 2014. So those are just a few of his several awards. Are we all together, everyone? Yeah, just send a thumbs up or an emoji to show you're following. Okay, good. Thank you, Raima. Oh, don't see me. Now, I'm going to try to connect one or two things. Good, yeah, sure, well done. I want to connect one or two things about me, Yoshinda Ray's background and life to um, this poem in particular. Remember how it is that he's an activist. An activist is someone who fights for a particular cause. There are different kinds of activists. There are what we call human rights activists. That's like a general term. So a human rights activist is concerned about the well-being of humans all over the world. A human rights activist always wants to see that the rights of the individual are upheld. So yeah, very good. Yeah, just like um, Barasa family father no good. Now there are some who are animal activists. They do not want animals to be maltreated in any way. Others are nature activists and so on. So, but Neoshinari is more of a nature and a political activist. Most of the time when he writes essays or he um, runs interviews, he usually has something to say about the government, whether good or bad. He's always able to analyze what the government is doing, what's happening in society. And one major feature of all societies is leadership, government. Okay, nice one, Rahima. Rahima wants to go like him, okay. Now, every society has some form of organization, leadership of government. And we all know what happens when several governments or countries want to change leadership with an election. And that's the idea that is represented in the poem, The Leader and the Led. Yes, Emilia, you're very correct. The Capro is an animal activist. So this poem, as we've discussed, talks about the struggle or trust for leadership amongst animals in the animal kingdom. Neo Shinari uses that as a representation of what happens in all societies, but he focuses on Africa and Nigeria in particular. So um, now everyone, I'll quickly run through the rest of the slide in this presentation, and then you can ask your questions. So as you saw previously, Neil Shinari was born in 1947. He has published 18 volumes of poetry, several plays, essays, articles, and works of criticism. He was once a professor at the University of Ibadan, but now he teaches at the Franklin Pierce College, New Hampshire. Now, you just might want to note that he and his wife survived Hurricane Katrina. How many of you remember that it happened in 2005? Then he was living in New Orleans. Now, New Orleans is one of the worst hit regions um, yeah, during the Hurricane Katrina. Well, um, okay, just a little extra information. Now, he and his wife were almost um, victims. Let me say, almost died in the flood. They survived by getting to the attic of their house. You know what the attic is, right? That space just um, beneath the roof. And a neighbor of theirs who was rowing in a boat or a canoe saw them and that's how they were rescued. So they lost all of their property. Neo Shinari lost all his manuscripts, manuscripts for his unpublished works. And the management at Franklin Pierce College offered him a job. And that's how he now stays in New Hampshire. So some of his kids also stay in the US. His son still lives in Nigeria. Now, his poetry combines aspects of Yoruba culture and Marxism. Marxism has to do with a socialist belief. You are the old government, right? So yes, good. Uh, I don't need to explain too much about that, but those um, writers that have Marxist ideals or beliefs want a situation where 
the, pe the people are directly responsible for government. Wealth is equally distributed, and they usually consider every situation as a relationship between different classes in society. Just as you have in this poem, you have the leader and the led. You have the rich and the poor. You have the business owners and the employees. So there, there's always a way of analyzing issues using the differences in class. It doesn't matter which kind of classes talking about, no, but classes or status in society. As I mentioned earlier, the background of this poem is the political instability or the situation in Africa. Okay, I'm writing now. Okay, um, please don't write yet um, because we don't have enough time to go through everything. In the next class, there'll be time to write. Alternatively, if there's a way you can do a screenshot, or if you're in your system, yeah, you do a screen on your system also, or you snap the slide, but I'll give you more time in the next class to write. Okay, of course you can do it. Okay, so I'll just give you a few seconds for each of the slides. 10 seconds for each slide, so you can just jot a few things. Meanwhile, why, while you are jotting down some notes, no, he's still alive. Okay, Fatima, good question. He's still alive. You can ask your questions. Imagine like that he lives in New Hampshire. No, I haven't had the honor of meeting him, Fatima. He's one of those writers that I really love to meet. He was in um, Nigeria, I think, in 2014 or so, but um, I think he's. Well, around for his birthday celebration. Yeah. Okay, Fatima, we'll pass on your request about inviting him for grad to the management. Okay, next slide. Okay, she missed question. Okay, who is the man this? Okay, thank you, Fatima, for that response. Well done. So, Marx is this is someone who believes in the ideas of Karl Marx. Okay, next slide. All right, just a few more seconds for the rest of the slide. Yes, Ms. Lil Pump, yes, I saw when you joined the quiz. Who is that? Yeah, please introduce yourself. Yeah, and keep all other chats till after this lesson. You know how you can exchange information. Who is Lil Pump? Oh, whoever here is here. I'm going to address of you um, jotting down stuff. I don't expect you to write the full note now, but just jot a few things, and the video actually will be available for you to access after the lesson. Okay, Demilade, all right. Do you have any questions, Demilade? I hope you've been following. See me? Well, so you know, all of your comments are being monitored here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, since we are actually in class here, you, you get marks for class participation. Uh -huh. So every, everything you do here counts. I just thought I should mention that. So um, before we round off, very quickly, something briefly about the subject matter. Now everyone, please listen up. It's good that you remember that the subject matter of any work is actually what that poem or play or novel is about. So the subject matter of this poem is the quest for leadership. It's about animals attempting to choose a leader.
Any other questions? All right, Fatima, you have a question. Okay, good, shoot. Uh, the YouTube link will be sent to you after the lesson. Okay, very good question for Fatima. We can all see the question now. Um, question one, good. It's a very intelligent question and it's come at the right time. That's actually part of your assignment. So you're going to help answer that. Yes, I'll drop my email, Rahima. Now, secondly, does it matter about the person's appearance? Yes and no. Now, um, there have been very several influential leaders in the past who really wouldn't have um, emerged tops in the beauty contest. Number, what is most important are the qualities. Um, person's appearance doesn't really count for much when it comes to being a leader, but there are other secondary factors or issues. For instance, a leader who appears shabbily will not come across as being disciplined. So it's not easy for you to take someone who dresses carelessly serious. That's why when you look at several leaders, whether it's in politics or entertainment or education, a whole lot of them make an effort to appear as they want to be regarded. Yes, for instance, good, good um, point, Fatima. Now, for those um, animals who said the water was too ugly, they regarded the quality of appearance, whether one is handsome or beautiful, they regarded such a quality as being more important than other characteristics. Okay, good. Now, you, you actually do have a point. The thing is, when you consider election all over the world, people vote based on several factors. There's some that we just look at an individual and say, okay, um, I like this woman's hairstyle. There are several people in the US that voted for Clinton, um, Hillary Clinton in the last election, just because they liked her dress sense, they liked her voice, they liked the way she spoke about issues. So they didn't really care much about what she believed in, but her appearance just did it for them. All right, I'm going to type my email here. You can send the assignment to that mail. So there you have your assignment. Please note it down, everyone. Okay, good contributions, Rahima and Fatima. See me also. Thanks. Yeah, it has a setting. Excuse me, Animal Kingdom. Assignment one, explain three themes in the poem, the leader and the lead. Two, mention three poetic devices and the lines in the poem in which they occur. So what that simply means is that you are going to identify poetic devices used in the poem. So for now, just three. Another question, we're running off in a matter of seconds. So you can send your assignments to my email as soon as possible. So next class, we'll have more time to copy the notes and we'll move on to a much more detailed analysis for, um, of rather the point. Okay, see me, I'm not, that's sure about that. I mean, you shouldn't have the timetable. Okay, um, the next class should be on Saturday, unless the arrangements change. But well, for now, as far as I know, our next class should be online here. Oh, okay, so did you get the link for science? 
Wow, okay. Um, I would mention it to your chemistry teacher, but get in touch with your, um, how do I put it now, your other science classmates and find out if any one of them was able to join the science in class. I know chemistry was supposed to be going on. But not to worry, you can um, catch up on what um, was done via the YouTube link. Okay, Fatima, I can't answer that question, sorry, because I haven't been at school since last week. All right, any other questions about this lesson and your assignments? This is science. Okay, we'll check on that later. <clears throat> Okay, no sense link. Okay, all right. All right I'll, I'll confirm that. Mm, okay, Fatima asked a question. Does anyone want to volunteer an answer? What type of poem do we call this? Okay, yes, good. It's, it's a fable. When you're talking about, when you talk about the form of the poem, yes, it's, it's a fable because it deals with Animals, thank you, Yashura, so good. We mentioned that earlier and you noted it also. So, but questions that have to do with um, the digital devices and other aspects that were not mentioned, we're definitely going to deal with them in the next class. Okay, all right, good, yeah, that, okay. You can do a quick count yourself, Fatima. How many lines, how many standards are there? And that would even help you in preparing for the next class. So just you can add that to your assignment. A number of lines. Um, okay, you know what the poem. Okay, all right. There are 24 lines, 12 stanzas. Each stanza has two lines. As a result, we can say this uh, the poem is a stanza of 12 couplets. I hope you got that. Okay. So um, since you all have access to the internet, you could try to, okay, I would see, all right, maybe you might be able to copy the poem in the next slide. It's not that long, just 24 lines, okay, short lines. Welcome, Fatima. All right. All right, well done, everyone. Thanks for contributing to today's lesson. We would uh, make the date next lesson. Make sure you do your assignment and read up whatever you can about the poem so that we can have more to discuss in the next class. And you can also come up with questions that we can all try to answer. All right, thank you.